this is quite a cool tutorial to put together. Uh, I really enjoy just exploring a few different techniques and methods. In this one we have a submesh bounty box, we've got the rectangle pattern tool, we've got trails, we've got the spring deformer and a few others. And yeah, it's just a matter of uh, figuring a few things out, a bit of trial and error and see what worked. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, for this one we're just going to start off with the bite growth. So just in your deformers, add the align deformer. And here we can change the alignment on the X and Y. So we're just going to bring it right to the top. Jump back into your rec shape. And we're not going to change the scale on the deformer. We're just going to change the height in here for this one. And to do that, we're just going to use the noise on the height. Jump in there and change your negative to something that's not too crazy. And this is just going to run with the pixels. So it's a little easier to understand than just wrangling it with the scale. So if we just hit play now, we have it. And if we add this into our input shapes on our um, duplicator, we have our bar graph. There's nothing too crazy on here. It's just set to linear, count five, and size mode step, just because it's the easiest thing to do. For this highway animation, for this, we're just going to start off with a rectangle pattern. So if the size, just make that as wide as your UI your needs to be. And bring that count down a little bit. We can tweak some of these little details later on. Uh, the gap type can be alternating, but we're just going to change it down to fixed width. And I'll bring this down a bit now. And for the bar size, we're just going to pop a noise into here. And some of them have disappeared because it's gone into negatives again. And you can see our animation there is moving around a bit. So I'm just going to change this countdown to 5. And I'll change the height down to whatever tickles our pickle. And there we go. So pop the rectangular pattern into our duplicator. And hide the original. And on our duplicator, now we're going to add a submesh. And this is going to be used to work with the colors. So just use whatever color array you've got handy. There's more than one way to tie a knot with the colors, but I just found that this way is just kind of pretty straightforward. And also to round that out, add a bevel. And there we have our nice little animated data transfer or whatever it is. I'm not too sure. Okay, so for the ring graph, we use a rectangle pattern as well, but change the pattern mode to ring. I've got the count set to five, and you can see there's five different segments here. So to break that up and color it another way, we can just go to a deformer again, put on a sub mesh, change this to on and pop it in, pop our color array in here. So if we change the gap type down to fixed angle, you can see how the, the angles aren't here aren't parallel or anything. So just change that, turn that off again, and then just add another deformer. We're just going to use the path offset. And just bring that down a little bit, and that way the lines are parallel. It's just a small detail, but I thought it looked quite nice. And in here as well, I've also got a some noise into the bar size. And the noise is positive. You can see the animating around. I have some text here that I pulled off Wikipedia and we're just going to use that to drive a submesh submesh bounding box. So grab the submesh bounding box and throw that text into and I'm just going to drop this opacity down a little bit. So if we want this to be broken up per word 
Um, you can just see here it's actually a bit messy. We want everything to be the same height. So jump back into your text shape and add change case. And you can see here that some of them um, still don't quite sit right. I added a little comma in here. So you might just have to delete some of the punctuation because it puts a few things out of whack. And that looks pretty, pretty good. Okay, so for our dotted line graph, we're just going to ellipse fed into a duplicator. So if we go into here and just add some, just go into here and add a random to the Y. I found in this instance, I found negative 150 to 150 worked out okay. And we wanted to change the seed every 25 frames. So we just click on here and go round. And then we have to add a frame behavior into here. So make sure you change this rounding here to 25. So I'll bring them both into our attribute editor. And you can see every 25 frames, these are moving position. To make them blend into different positions, we're going to use a another deformer, and we're going to use the spring deformer, which is a pro feature. And if I just hit play now, you can see they bounce around. Which is kind of cool. Just a note, this is on the ellipse, it's not in the duplicator. If you put it in the duplicator, the balls will bounce around in a few different ways. So just make sure you put it into the actual shape. So I'm just going to bring this open, I uh, bring this up and, and as you can see here, I've just brought that damping down to 0.4 and we have quite a nice ease between those positions. To connect them, I'm using a points, points to path. And just change that point size to submesh and pop your duplicator in there. But also be sure to turn off the, this little switch down here. And if we want our circles on top, there we go. And we'll just use this one as the starting point for our trail animation. It's pretty much the same concept. We're going to use a trails though. And our circle. And one thing to, that's important to know is the radius. So with our trails open, we're just going to drag our duplicator into it and change that length down to about 12. And we'll just jump in here to our stroke and change that to And for the trails, I'm going to use the color array as well. And I'm just going to put that in there. But for the opacity, I'm just going to bring it down. I just thought it had quite a nice look to it where the colors were matched. So you might just have to color it, play around with the timings on this one um, and adjust the trails as well. So if I just jump into here and bring this down to 10, it might work a little better or change that round seed up to 50. Okay, so to get this wavy line, the line itself doesn't actually move. What happens is that it's used, it's deformed by a noise deformer. So we're just going to add some numbers in here that I'm just making up. Click on use normals and we have something like this. I'm just going to jump back into the main and lift this up to say 25. Um, again, this is like a bit of a numbers numbers game, so it's up to you how you want to wrangle it. What you have to do though is disable time. And what we're going to animate instead is this position down here. So the easiest way to animate that without keyframes is just to use a frame on the X. And I'm just going to lift this value up to three. Okay. 
and I'm just going to add a subdivide as well. Mm, it's a bit stroppy. So I've just lifted up the divisions here and I've still got that subdivide on it as well. Maybe that subdivide might be a bit high. So one thing to do here is you can change the frequency to um, affect how smooth or rough or how detailed you want your noise to be. Okay, so now we have an ellipse here. To, to tie this to the front of the curve, we're just gonna go to our position, right click and put on Pathfinder. And in our Pathfinder, we're just gonna put that master in there. Turn off loop if you want to and just pop that up there. So now it looks like the uh, the ball has a bit of a trail behind it. And as I said, like um, I've done something similar to this before, but I haven't. Um, I feel like I haven't added this many divisions, but um, in this instance, it works. So I'm just going to run with it. <laughs> OK. So what we can do here, select all this, group it and then just pop it into a duplicator and put onto point. One other thing I had as well was just this dashed line in the background. And if I put that dashed line into a linear duplicator, play with your numbers, I have, um, So you can just put a, another frame onto the dash offset as well. I'm not sure how this is going to look. But yeah, this kind of creates a little bit of parallax, which I thought was kind of cool.